For half a century, heavy metal has endured. It has spread and it has spawned. Legions of fans all over the world share a common language. The t-shirts we rock, the patches we procure, the denim we destroy, and the leather that keeps us together. These are the unique expressions that unite us, and this is the fabric of metal. Headbangers have been painting, sewing, and even embroidering their battle jackets since the inception of heavy metal. But the origin of these vests, or battle jackets, or cuts is still speculative. These are the bombs, and these are some of the gallant flyers, now writing history in the skies over Nazi Europe, all eager to point that nose at Hitler's warplanes and war plans. Metal vests have been traced back to the bomber jackets that were customized by World War II pilots, a practice that was later adopted by bikers and outlaw motorcycle clubs. To a, a motorcycle club, particularly a one percenter club, right? It really is your vestment. It's almost your like religious habit. You do not take that off. Germans have been calling them Kutze or the cut. It originally meant monk's habit. Those patches are sacred to an outlaw motorcycle club, right? For metal fans, patches are held sacred in far less nefarious ways. Patches are almost like the trading cards of the metal community. It's it's kind of like collecting like Magic: The Gathering cards, right? You, a lot of us trade them with each other, hunt down the hard to find ones. Those hard to find patches is what motivated one death metal fan to start making patches for himself. I love all kinds of metal, but old school death metal is where it's at for me. And nobody was doing the patches, like I just couldn't find them. My name is Simon Springer. I am professor of human geography at the University of Newcastle, Australia. In my spare time, I'm a patch maker. Two and a half years ago, we founded Pull the Plug Patches. I guess I'm the professor of patches now. I think we've changed the way people think about patches a little bit, that they used to be your option was a square patch with a black border. All these cool bootlegs that I was seeing of, of maiden patches and, and that sort of thing that were in different kinds of shapes, we wanted to do that, but bring it to one, to death metal, and two, to uh, making official patches. Simon, do you remember your very first patch? I think I was about nine. I was a huge Motley Crue fan and I was saving up my allowance for this Motley Crue back patch. I went down to get it and it was gone. So I ended up with this poison back patch, which... Oh. Uh, yeah, that was my <laughs> feeling. I remember painting a big, a big Eddie face on my first vest. Jackets was my entry into metal in the first place, noticing other kids on the bus having these jackets like the older kids, you know, that you're scared of. This is Tom Cardwell. Tom took a deep dive into the battle vest for his PhD thesis and as the focus of a series of paintings. I think the thing that led me to choose the vest as a focus for the paintings was through a previous series of work that I'd done featuring suits of armor. So Tom, in addition to researching the history of customized garments, you also went to a ton of metal shows to gather personal stories. Can you tell us about that process? I would go to, to concerts and festivals and really just talk to people. And festivals tend to work better because people are there for longer, they've often got more time. And you know, you want to catch them in that right part of the day where they're not too, too hungover or too drunk. Oh, God! <laughs> you get them in the middle before the bands they really want to see are on and you might get them to chat for half an hour or something. I would work with my brother quite a lot, who's a photographer, so he would come with me and we'd look around for interesting vests and then we'd ask people, can we take a photo? Let's talk about your jacket. So from these photographs, you made the paintings. Can we see some of the paintings? Well, that's an example of one of the watercolors. Whoa! How long does it take to make one of those paintings? They take time. You know, any metal musician is putting in thousands and thousands of hours. That kind of labour is really built into metal and built into how people approach their jackets as well. So that investment of time. So I wanted to invest the time in the painting because you can do a photograph of a jacket and capture it perfectly. 
but when you make the painting you have to look at it in a whole new way because you're looking at it for ages where does your mind go when you're focused on the details of these patches for that long as I painted the jacket, I tried to listen to all the bands as I was painting. Often I would know those bands, but some of them I wouldn't. And occasionally they're a jacket where I hardly knew any of the bands, you know. So it's like me getting this education, which I feel like is part of the point of Vest as well. To say to other people, hey, you should check this out. It's like you're wearing your mixtape, right? Simon, you're a patch maker and a fan. What would you say is the purpose of a patch? You know, I think that's a great question. I think a lot of people are just streaming music now, so they don't have that physical connection to the product like, you know, like they did when I was growing up. How did you find out about new bands? You read the liner notes. That was the only way, you know, to get that information. So I've kind of wanted to use that idea because people are now connecting to patches, that idea that they can be a conduit to, to learning about other music as well. You know, they write to me and they say, I discovered this band because you made patches for it and I'd never heard of them. So we've actually updated our website now where every single patch has a YouTube video embedded. So it's a way you can check out other music as well. How did you connect with death metal? I think I was 12 when I first saw Death Leprosy. That pink cover, it just really stood out to me. First time I heard it, it absolutely scared the shit out of me. Like the vocals were just like way over the top. <laughs> mentioned the color of that Death Leprosy album and that is a calling card of your patches. Most of them have this really unique color. Is that related to that first shock of pink that you saw on that Death album? I've had some bands say to me, why don't you tone down the colors? Well, why didn't you tone down the colors on the original album art, right? That's really what makes it iconic and we try to make it as true to the original album art as possible. So what do your vests look like and do you follow any personal rules? I have a bolt thrower jacket. The rule is only bolt thrower. And then I've had a vest that's all vintage 90s death metal. But I think the overarching theme is there should be no rules, right? It's metal. It's supposed to be rebellious. It's supposed to be doing your own thing. That's your piece. That's your personal uh, reflection of your engagement with the music, your connection to it. Do what you love, right? I guess that's part of what makes wearing a vest such a statement. You're kind of saying you're up for the challenge of people who don't agree with you. And so maybe that's a core value of metal as well. You know, I'm a geographer, so that's actually what's interesting to me is all the places that I've sent patches to. It's a global phenomenon. I've sent patches to Algeria, to Kenya, to Saudi Arabia, to places you wouldn't think people would be into patches, but they are. The popularity of patch vests may wax and wane, but they have never truly gone away. And for that reason, they are an integral part of the fabric of metal. Mm -hmm.